Hi, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate the actual use and function of our Mongoose transmitter along with our 3S4 4Q modules. The first step after you unpack the uh, transmitter and the 3S4s would be to assemble it. Never power any of the devices on without first having the antennas put on, on, the, on the units and the transmitter. The 3S4s come generally with this particular antenna which is the two inch small gain antenna and this works fine for 100, 200 meters but if you're going to use anything further than that I would recommend upgrading to um, this much larger adjustable antenna. It gives a higher gain of a five and uh, you know for dependability and, and, and for range this, this would be invaluable. So to start all you do is you screw the antenna on it's much easier with two hands but let's see there we go and you'll notice with this antenna is it is adjustable so if you're going to be laying this thing on on the table you just can fold the uh, antenna up like this you know if you're going to be holding it then you can leave it straight but it's always best to be perpendicular to the ground to give a better signal the next step would be to go ahead and power on your modules and um, you'll notice on the back I've got a piece of paper with uh, numbers written on. These numbers indicate what address number I have it set for. Currently this is set for 2, this is set for 3, so I'll kind of lay it in its order. And of course this one is set for 1. The other thing I want to point out is you'll notice way down here on the corner there's a very small little switch. This is the switch that indicates what address you want. It's currently, this one currently is set for three, so the little arrow here points to three. And you can set this thing all the way up. Um, and as a matter of fact, you can set it for zero, and then hook this thing up to a computer, and you can set this thing upwards of 99 if you wanted to. Uh, so you have a few different options here. So the power on switch, is here. When I power this thing on, you're going to notice a bunch of lights kick on. That's the um, snake, which goes ahead and it reads the circuit, uh, makes sure that the um, circuit protection is, is good, and it, it checks the processor. It does a bunch of safety checks. So we'll power it on. You'll notice it does its little light. Right now, when these lights here are lit and solid, that's indicating that it is currently thinking. And right now, you'll notice that it's flashing blue and the, the processor lights here are off so it's basically ready to go. So we'll power all these units on. Again you can notice the lights are on here indicating the processor is thinking. When that finishes right there you're ready to go. Now the transmitter very similar you're going to power it on with a little switch up at the top here And then it'll do its self-process routine, looking for any faults or errors. As soon as it finishes, you're ready to go. Now you'll notice there's a nice big computer LCD screen up top. In order to toggle this light on and off, you just push the green button and you'll notice the light lit up. And when that light lights up, there's some... Uh, indicators on the bottom. The first one shows the battery state of your transmitter. The next one is RF. The RF signal when you first power it on is indicating your transmitting percent power. It isn't the um, signal strength from your module to the transmitter. It's actually designed to indicate what your unit is designed to transmit. You, you can lower the percentage if you want it to extend the battery life. Um, if you're very, very close, there's no need to be transmitting on 100%. Um, however, just for simplicity purposes, I always leave it at 100%, but there might be a, a circumstance that you want to lower that. Um, you will be able to tell signal strength by checking an individual module unit. When you hit test, then it's now communicating back and forth and it's going to tell you a percentage of the signal strength. So not only signal quality, but signal strength. So you know exactly when you hit the button to fire, you know exactly 
I'm very certain that the module itself will do exactly what you want it to do. So right now we already described, we powered everything on and you're good to go. There's a little uh, icon on the right that says disarm. The disarm state is not valid yet because we haven't tested the circuit. So we're gonna go ahead and hit test. And you can notice a lot of flashing, but you also notice that these 12 lights lit up. These 12 lights lighting up are indicating what available cues you have available to you. Now, when you go ahead and receive the units, obviously you will need to arm the modules for safety purposes. To arm the modules, you must push both arm buttons at the exact same time. And you'll notice little green lights lit up on the modules. These little green lights at the top indicate you have a hot circuit. Now for any reason, should you want to disarm the system for safety purposes, you only need to push one or the other, not at the same time, you don't have to, to disarm. So if I push the disarm button, it's now disarmed and you're ready to arm again. So we're gonna arm the system. And again, you notice the lights came back on. So now you're basically ready to fire. And you can fire these modules in one of three ways. You can either fire it individually, which means you simply push a cue here, and you'll notice the light lights up. Three, four, five, six, seven, and go on and on and on. Right now, um, we'll hit test again, I'll reset these. Or you can do the incremental or the step mode. And the step mode just means it's gonna go, so you don't get confused on what buttons you're pushing, you can just push one button. And you'll notice when I do this, these lights are gonna go off. <coughs> so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then nine, 10, 11, 12. Now, it might be difficult for you to see because there, there is some lights that light up, but every time, it doesn't matter if, it's the, for instance, this is um, module three. If I push Q12, Q12 isn't on, excuse me, if I push Q1, Q1 isn't on module um, three. So you'll see the processor light light up, but not the Q, which is up here. So you'll notice the light lights up every time. That light when it flashes indicates signal. So it's receiving a signal, but it knows it's not the correct Q to fire. However, since this is three, if I were to hit nine, you'll notice it lit up. And then 10, and then 11, and then 12. You'll notice this these lights lit up here indicating the Q. Again, if you wanted to disarm, Want go ahead and push one or the other of these red lights here. It says disarm, and you'll notice that the uh, arming circuit is now off. So you can fire this thing I showed you manually or in step mode. There's a third way as well, and that's by using the firing trigger. Now the firing trigger on the 3S4 is used to fire the modules. However, the, the firing trigger on a Murloc firing system would be used as a dead man. And the dead man, when you're firing it in full script mode, you won't be able to fire the script unless this button is pushed in. So that theoretically, if the shooter were to have a heart attack or become disabled somehow and his finger came off the trigger, the firing would stop for safety purposes. So this um, demonstration I want to actually do a live fire so you actually see this thing fire off now I talked a little bit about continuity um, again the continuity both shows up on the module itself and on the transmitter so let's go ahead and show that real quick to start you'll notice that on the module there's there's four cues per every module and so each cue has two places to play, place a wire, but for the positive and the negative. Now, a, a, a e-match doesn't care you know, which goes in the positive or the negative, but uh, there's two holes right next to each other. So there's the first cue, then the next two holes is the second cue, then the next one, two. This is the third cue, and then the final one has two, right? So all you have to do 
is take your two wires here off the one E-match and simply place it inside the hole. Now these are push contacts, so just push on it. Give it a little tug, make sure it's secure, and it's in. And then powering it on, you'll notice a little green light comes on indicating that's detecting an E-match inside the module. Now we're going to hit test on this transmitter and you'll notice that a little tiny orange light kicked on right here. The orange light indicating over the queue, it's indicating that in fact it is detecting a, uh, an E-match, the orange is telling you that it's no, not armed. So if you were to go ahead and push this button, right, you'll notice that the light is lighting up. Oops, sorry. It's lighting up, but it's not going to fire because the module itself is disarmed. So you have to arm it. Again, to arm it, you simply push these two buttons at the same time that say arm. Boom, and then do a retest. And you'll notice that the little orange light just turned green. So now it's saying that I'm detecting an E-match and it's green on the mongoose, indicating that the uh, system is armed at the module number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fire it. We are armed, this is powered on, firing in three, two, one, and that's how it's done. And of course we only had one E-match, but uh, of course you'd go all the way through. Now I fired manually, but you could also fire incrementally. Now there's nothing in it, but we'll just go ahead and fire and you'll notice that these lights turn off as I go through. And that's it. And of course, if we had another module, you'd, you'd see um, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And of course, the third module would be 9, 10, 11, and 12.